But I am a winner. Yeah, I mean, you are winning. I'm one of life's winners. You can't one win to the losers. Winner. Yeah, I'm one of life's winners. The losers didn't accept you. Yeah. You they didn't accept me either. You bullied your way to the winners. They said I was too much of a winner to be a loser. Oh. It's a real, real Ishan mantra. Shame is delicious. delicious. Welcome to another fantastic episode of Shame is Delicious. I'm so excited about this one. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Yeah? That's, Genuinely. That's a good good start. This is the most excited I've been about a guest. Wow. Okay, wow. He's taking the piss, that's, that's, Genuinely. Okay, well, I'll, 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 no, I'll let you do the introduction. No, no, you, you, I, want, you, I want your excited energy to bring it bring it home for the beginning okay. of the show. Right. Where did you start, though? What? I, ju- I literally did it. I didn't even get to say- Hello, welcome to Shame is Delicious with me, Darren Harriet. And me, Ishan Akbar. I'm very excited about today's guest. Yeah. Because she is a wonderful comedian, a wonderful person, but more than anything, she's my sister from East London. I love her with all my heart. It's Laura Smith. So you you two are both sort of East London. Yeah. Yeah. What makes East London such a like... Who cares about it? <laughs> like, Everyone. Because living in London, South London, everybody goes on about South London like it's this fucking... Yeah, because it's shit. That's, yeah. that, that's the thing. Like, South Londoners talk about South London so much because it is actually shit and dead and there's no, no Do you um, people transport about links. Croydon. I know. Croydon. Yeah. Like it's they this, love it. It's like a republic, man. They yeah. are like they survived. you got trams, brother. Yeah, Morley's. Tram. Calm down. <laughs> Calm down. <laughs> we got a Morley's in Brom now. Have you? Yeah, there's one on uh, Broad Street. We got a Morley's. Look at that. Because I've seen a lot Street. of Dixie and Dixie's a deep East Ooh. London. Yeah, so Dixie's you've got Dixie's You're here. lying. Dixie's, Dixie's East, East London. London. Well, put it this way. You don't see a Dixie in South. It's just Morley's. That's how you know you've crossed through. If you're ever drunk and you've woken up in a taxi, you're not sure where you are. Oh, I'm in South because yeah. you see a Morley's. You see a Morley's, yeah. I didn't know this. <laughs> yeah. I didn't know this. That's the divide. That's the big divide, if I'm honest. Hang on. Uh, what about North London? What? What's the divide? Ooh. They probably just have KFC. Now, what did North London no, like? I thought you'd see a Dixie's uh, in North London. The North London main Pakistani chicken shop. Pakistani, I like the way you said that. I like the you said that then. You really went you in on that. You committed to it. It's like when Pakistani. someone that speaks French, so who speaks French says croissant. You yeah. committed to the word. Well, you say Pakistani, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Pakistani. It's like, I, can't go, I can't go around saying Pakistani, can I? No, you can't. But say shawarma as well, like when you... Shawarma. <laughs> that sounded fun. I yeah. like that one. I see this sauce, garlic sauce, my friend. Yay. Shwa- shwa- I say shawarma. Sure, what, yeah, sort of Ooh, God, that sounded real English. Uh, Laura, how are you? I'm really well. I'm really well, actually. I feel good. You feel good? Yep. Life going all right? Life's going lovely. You know, it's nice, booked and blessed. And you got nice are things killing it. In. Booked and blessed. Ooh, that's that's the one, isn't it? I like that one, That's yeah. the kind of shit you hear Alison Hammond say. I love it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, man. Alison Hammond. Queen, Queen of the West Midlands. She, she is, she is. She is. And uh, you're here with the king of the West uh, Midlands, eh? There you go. Come on, yeah. I mean... Uh, there, there is, Joe Lice, Joe Lice, Joe Lice is probably yeah okay. Prince, <laughs> Prince, you're, you're, I'd say you're more you're more like you're more like a baron, a Ooh, baron, yeah. not even gonna viscount him. No, <laughs> a, a, a baron of the West Midlands. Yeah, that doesn't that doesn't sound good. That's why I said it. <laughs> 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 Banter, have you ever heard of it? <laughs> <laughs> I really took it seriously. <laughs> yeah, you I was like, you were so fucking earnest. You're like, that doesn't sound good. good. <laughs> good. Yeah, I said, yeah, that's why I said it. Oh yeah, we do drugs here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we do drugs here. That's what we do. <laughs> Laura, when did we meet? What, a couple of years ago? No? It was boat show, wasn't it? And your brother was there. My brother was there. And there was just this sort of, I think, because I'm from East London. Anytime I see an Asian person, I presume I know them anyway. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> But when you actually said, yeah, Ilford, I was yeah. like, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, you know, your dad was at a cabbie on Upton Lane yes. and very near me. We knew the same. Yeah, Forest the best Gate. You live in Forest Gate. It's part, with part of the world I know very intimately. It just felt right. Yeah. That Laura, way. you also went to a private school. Oh, as well. I wish. I wish. Yeah. yeah that's how you... I wish my parents had the forethought. They, well, I mean, uh, yeah, I mean, I got a scholarship, so it wasn't like. But well, the forethought to. <laughs> oh, God. I hate it the way you said that. read good. Why? I hate it the way you said that. Why? Uh, but, but, you know, uh, I got a scholarship. So. <laughs> that is important, isn't it? It's important. Well, where to... you've got in life, you earned that at 11. Ex- I did. Hello. Hello. I did. I'm, That's I'm true. not even bantering. Yeah. You're not even letting me. I'm just going to let him have a moment. Yeah. <laughs> because I'll forgive his very aspirational middle class voice. Yes. To say he earned that fucking. I did. 
Because I voice. sounded like Laura. Which is just as... I, I love the... Why are you using <laughs> those? <laughs> you know, I hadn't won that scholarship. I could have ended up like this little screw <laughs> sitting next to me. You really did say that. that. Was, oh, am Jesus. I the before <laughs> shot? Yeah, 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 you are. Was that a scholarship? <laughs> Kiku, could I go? Oh, oh, bloody hell. Oh, bloody hell, oh, mate. Oh, no, no, not nothing. No, no, nowhere. <laughs> Then he got a job in the city, yeah. and then he said, I'm earning money hand over fist. <laughs> yeah, yeah. What if I go and join the That's circus exactly with happened. the lowly, lowly little brummies and cockanies? That's exactly what happened. Exactly. You want it all, didn't you? Yeah, Ishan. I do. I do want everything. <laughs> I hate that. Ishan. Ishan. Like, Take it up with my parents. That's how it's meant to be pronounced. That, no, it's not. It is. Ishan. It's Ishan. Is it really a Sean? And Ishan, I say it yeah. properly, don't I? I yeah. never... I, 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 uh, your mum, dad... Lovely people. Yeah. Hate it. I prefer Ishan. <laughs> Do you but want... again, it's because it's because of my accent from the Midlands. We we don't But you guys like, say Arn all the time. It's like we don't we don't say like he, we don't say Pass. Oh yeah, you got a flat uh, hold, on, hold on, hold on, hold on, oh, hold on Laura. What was that mate? The way you say on? Arn. 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 Is the kettle oh, on? On. Oh, is it on? Is it on? Oh, is the kettle on? No, you Turn don't. the kettle on. <laughs> <laughs> Are you just quite he, have a brain injury? <laughs> he just offended about several groups because his accent was everywhere yeah, just that, then. Yeah, that was really, it was all over the place. E Eshan. I'll tell you who's been all over the place, mate. Laura Smith. Yeah, yeah, hey. yeah. yeah absolutely yeah, smashing it. Yeah. I had the privilege of watching you uh, make a live with the Apollo debut. I was there in the audience. You were. Were you was... seething with jealousy? Oh, no, you did it as well. <laughs> No, but he was still seething. Yeah. Still seething. Was it the no. same? Was it? Did you do yours on the same day? I did mine the day before. Uh, oh, okay. Nice. Uh, but you was... weren't there for me. You were there for your friends. Were you there for me? Of course I was there oh, for you. Did you not see the I Love Laura Smith banner who was holding? Oh, yeah. I was, I was there for you. Yeah. I was just swelling with pride. I was so happy because Aww. when I met you on the boat, immediately, of course, we kicked it off. Yeah. But then I, like, seeing you go from strength to strength to strength has been brilliant. Nice. When did you, when did you uh, do the Live at Apollo? September last year, wasn't it? September. Oh, yeah, because um, I saw a clip that's doing really well from that. Yeah. Stand and I, because cause I, I was teaching, so yeah. I never ever put reels on Instagram. I never did, did never put any yeah. material out there. I was always very careful about it. And plus, you know, it detracts from the live circuit, especially when you're starting out. You haven't got like 20s to burn, have you? You haven't got gags to burn. But like um, when uh, my friend put it on to promote his night, he just clipped one clip and it just exploded. And then, you know, you know, when you go, oh, as you're thinking, oh, I better keep this going. The agent yeah. gets on the phone like, we need to keep this going. So clip it. It just makes a mad difference. Yeah, it's crazy. Reels make a huge difference. My, my, my favorite thing is to, um, like I did uh, Old Rope, Tiff's night the other day. Mm. Yeah. And me, Tiff, and a couple of us were just chatting about video clips and what comics have left their agent because their clips got like a million views as a couple who have left. And uh, it's funny because Rich Hall was just sitting there and he was just looking at us with just like, what uh, language are you speaking? And then, and then Tiffany was like, what do you think of all this, Rich? And he just goes, I hate it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I hate Because that's what it is. It's old comics, new comics. Everybody's posting clips. And I think a lot of the older comics, they just don't understand it. Yeah. Like, technically, if we go from when I did my first gig, I would be one of those older comics, I guess, when you've been going longer than like 15 years, yeah. I guess. Mm. But I understand it. And I'm so happy about it because it means everybody can eat. Everybody can make yeah. their own audiences and well, stuff. It's so fun. I think th there's a couple of things going on. One is that there's content makers, which are, which are different people, aren't they? And they're phenomenal content makers. But of course, then where do you go with that? Well, they've got a tour. So they then enter on the live circuit. Yeah. And even though they've got like hundreds Munya, of fans. Yeah, yeah, but I, I think, you know, he, he's phenomenal live. But it's also, it's like, if you're into Munya because of his content, He's got that tough thing now. Of, well, how do I translate that, that to that, an hour? Yeah. Because they're not in it for his stand up. They're in it for these brilliant sketches, yeah. music, yeah. you know, satire. And like Mickey takes that he can do within yeah. three and a half seconds. Somehow he's got content about yeah, yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. How do you translate that to an hour? And I think that that must be tough. Well, yeah, yeah. You uh, know. funny you mentioned Munya. Munya was one of the acts on that uh, at the uh, old uh. road. And he came in, he had, uh, I've never met him before. No. Uh, such respect for, like he was asking us like questions about like comedy and like writing material, and all, just out of the blue. He was just like asking, you could tell he really wanted to learn. And it was interesting watching him go up and do his stuff because you could tell that he's a new comic. Yeah, that's what's mad. And right. but he, he, his act is, it's not the sort of act I would ever want to have because 
There's music cues. Yeah, yeah, he yeah. does voices. I saw it at Top it, it, I mean, it was funny. He did, he did yeah, actually the kill. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but it, it was, there was music cues. He did voices. He did all this other stuff. And I was like, oh, yeah, he's trying to take that. He's bridging it. Yeah. 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 And um, that's what I saw at Top Secret. And I really respected it, man. I was yeah, like, yeah, you know yeah. what? He's actually working at it because I've, I, I, I did security. This was years ago before the great uh, sort of uh, online phenomenon of comics. But I, I uh, did security for uh, Dapper Laughs. Yeah. One of his shows during the whole Dapper Laughs thing. And he was a guy that was popular online, killing it, but was not the circuit comedian. No, this... So his gig was like, it was horrendous. It was yeah, a horrendous yeah, yeah, yeah. show because he wasn't, I don't but know what he's like when he's putting now. the work in, it he's feels like, work. because that's what I mean. It's bridging the gap. Exactly that musical cues, voices. And actually that's very clever. And obviously his insects is quick. He's quick quitted. So, yeah. Whatever he's learning, he's gonna. It's like he's down. It looks like he's downloading it, like the Matrix. Yeah, yeah. And, and I sound really patronizing because it's like it's, it's phenomenal. But it's things are different. But things, guys, you know, <laughs> Laura, come on. He, he never played. He never played Jonglers Portsmouth. <laughs> but this is what <laughs> I mean. Christmas. There's this breed of. There's That's this, all comedians yeah, say. Yeah. Back in Jonglers days, and I think there's something. We're almost. We're all relatively new. I'm much new, obviously, but in that sense of. They, the, the industry is a funny beast in the sense of like, they, people had the opportunity to go and do their craft for 10, 15, 20 years before any, before telly or any, in a weird way, not that I'm saying that's a nice thing. It's not the comedians fault that the industry go, oh, that's the next new thing. Yeah, Quick, yeah, let's yeah. grab them. Let's do this. Let's put them in adverts. And, you know, loads of things that I've done potentially could be way, oh, way too quick in some respects. Yeah. Do, do you know what I mean? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Luckily, I've got age on my side. But if I was in my early 20s, like, oh, she's this, she's that, yeah. she covers this and we want to grab this angle and yeah. people are being thrown into script development when they've just got five minutes. Yeah. It's insane. Yeah. You know, that's, and it's seen, not their fault. We've seen comics who have been plucked yeah. and pushed and suddenly they're just like, F I'm stuck now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I don't know how that is. You've just got to be, you got to be, you've just got to follow what's happening, the trends. You've got to kind of just stay up to date with them, I think, because they keep changing so much. Yeah. yeah. And like, like even now with online, the short clip days, us is slowly dying, dying because yeah. they can't make any money of it. So well, this yeah. is it. it's all longer clips now. So I think yeah. these 90 second, 30 second clips we're yeah. putting up, that eventually we're going to go back and there'll be like five minutes. In a That's yeah. why I've decided that I'm going to start sending feet pics on any fans. Yeah. Oh, you're gonna start. Saying, oh, you're yeah, gonna. That's you're my gonna next you're actually gonna do that. So yeah. Start sending some feet. Oh, uh, Laura, you've done. Uh, you've done your fair share of TV. Have you had any uh, guys message you about feet? Yeah. No. You're not a part of that comedian. Are, you are you not on the feet Wikipedia? Wiki feet. Thing? No, but I'm gonna say something that I. I maybe I should, I've never said it out loud, but I'm gonna say something that might then open stuff up. I've never had a dick pic. I've never had anything like that. Maybe I'm just sent a dick never, 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 not on social media. Never had nothing. No, really? I've never had nothing really? like that. I've never See, had not that bad. sordid feet requests. It sounds like I'm doing hashtag me, please. I'm yeah. not. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not. But it, I, I don't know. I'm just, I think, I think I'm a bit of like... I think how long have you been with your lovely husband? Um, 10 years. Oh, like, yeah. That's I've, not I've long enough. I've requested dick pics from him. I just mean <laughs> yeah. an unsolicited dick pic. Yeah, that's what I mean. So is it because... Ten years ago, no, we no, were sending dick pics. No, yeah, dick pics. I said, well, is that dating and marriage? Ten years, or would you? No, well, we uh, little, little, we've been together ten years, married seven. Ah, okay, oh, fine. Okay, yeah. What I was wondering was whether or not, because you've been with him, you weren't in a situation where people would just send you unsolicited no, dick pics. No, but people years. still no, people still was... send unsolicited on Twitter. On like, do you she was a teacher. Which kid is doing that? All Amos. of them. <laughs> no, but people slide into DMs and just oh, there's yeah. loads of female, loads of female, loads of people that just open dick pics. Do, do you get DM slides? No, but really nice DM slides. I've, I've only I've, only when I did the nationwide advert, I got one really horrible DM slide. Just one, which was just we hate you, my family fucking hate you, we hate the telly every time you're on. And it was mom, just, mom, mom, give, mom, give, give me your, give me your yeah, opinion yeah. on her and you too, Dad. Yeah, I yeah, yeah. <laughs> what about you, I get it, I get it, because those, you know, those certain adverts where it's just that one person talking, you just go, oh, fuck off, love. Oh, yeah, How, like, that, Howard from the, the Barclays, he yeah. probably got it a lot. Uh, Halifax. Halifax. Also, Howard is do you know what the joke about doing a bank advert you is? Know, don't say this, because I'm recording a Barclays advert this month which is fine but you know what's going to happen to you oh no shall I tell you every time someone sees you they're going to go loved you in the HSBC ad loved you in the oh, Nationwide yeah, ad loved you in the this ad loved you in the that ad they're going to name and you just think the money these banks you're like I've got best takeaway what about that and not one of them will Another get the advert show right that was failed after one yeah sorry you should just bring up all of what my TV show what failed. was your other TV show I was show in a show film? called uh, Britain's Best Takeaways 
me and uh, the lovely Sarah Cox, and it was a, a one series. I, see, because you're the wrong person to do that show. What do you mean I'm the wrong person the to that show? Person. How fucking dare you do, <laughs> do that Dude. show? What? I, I when, didn't, I didn't wait, eat, do you know what? Food? When that show made itself down by having no representation from Birmingham in the Curry Week. That was a good thing. I did, I did mention when that. That, that was aired, a solid point. I went on my alternative Twitter account and kept tweeting about how shit you were on it. No, you didn't because I saw your tweets from your account. <laughs> I remember you. You, did, you I didn't remember even you... use your burner account. <laughs> you, you just ruined your friend publicly. <laughs> I remember like you and Tez were just like trashing the show because of the lack of like. You're, yeah, like... you're fucking bastard. <laughs> you you like this? That's a very good impression of Tez. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. I'm just I, doing I, I racist got... impressions. I feel like I've got the cut. Like, I've got a good Tez impression. Bros before gatos. Oh uh, yeah, that's Love Island his... geckos. Yeah. He's a Love I-, I also auditioned for that. Love Island. Yeah, yeah. they 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 didn't. Oh, I auditioned for that. Yeah, they yeah. actually said in it. They said um, we want a. And this was what they said. We want a Guz Khan type. Oh, oh I, I love, love that. that. I love... On four different and castings. Tez got it. Yeah, Tez and uh, Jamali. Oh, I've had four different castings where the casting director has been like, "Oh, can you be a bit more Guz like?" Oh and god, I, was I like, just had a flashback. You, have you seen me? <laughs> <laughs> have you heard me? Yeah. Well, I went for four weddings and a funeral the, when they brought it back. And Gus got it. Gus got it. Yeah. They said to me, oh, we want the best friend. Uh, so da, 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 and they said, can you be more like Gus Khan? I'm like, no. Can you be more like Gus Khan? But they ended up just getting Gus Khan anyway. It, it, sometimes when someone told me a story about them sitting in the waiting room for a live audition, sat next to the person. Yeah. And when they went in there, can you be... Like, you know, person. it's like, yeah, that person. You're like, well, they're there. They're, they're going to get it. You, why are you asking? You yeah, know what you want. Time? That's so funny. Yeah, because he's like the guy now, I guess, for that. Oh, uh, I just filmed Outsiders with him. And Is he an outsider? Oh, outs- oh you did outsiders. outsiders! Yeah, you did it, didn't yeah, you? Yeah, I did yeah, the yeah. series before. Did you enjoy oh, it? Yeah. Oh, it's the best. How great is... Sorry, Yushan, just... Yeah, yeah. We're just going to have a little banter here. Your... How great is David Mitchell? Oh, Netflix. Doesn't so he, generous, September. Doesn't he so just quick. go with everything? He goes with everything. <laughs> so fun. Who was At, your partner? Chris McCausland. Oh, great. Chris is fun, man. Our energy was very much... Chris is the sharpest person I've ever met. Not only has he clocked how to do um, win the badge, how to do it, what to do it, how to do it quickly before anything's even been explained. Then he's like, and how to make it funny. And you're like, all right, so what we're looking at, Chris, is... And he's like, yeah, I've clocked it. I've already got it. You know, you're like... Mm. Yeah, he's just like, right, yeah. Such a great but show, man. Guz and Judy Love were paired. Oh, nice. That, that's a and powerful pairing. it was powerful. I mean, powerful to the point of you're just... You're like, especially, you know, in the HQ at the end of the night, you're just like... Yeah. Wind them up and watch them and go. Like- Guz is the funniest person. <clears throat> Anything is funny in his mouth. Anything he yeah. says, he called someone a weird twit. And if I could just recreate <laughs> how he said it, the weird put. Like, you yeah. know how he, and when he goes, oh my God, he's the most blessed person. And then Judy, uh, there's no words. There's yeah. not enough adjectives. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Kind of obsessed with Judy's career. Oh, Judy's I love her. Because it's, it's such a unique career. Because she was big online. I remember Judy used to do those videos, kind of like straight to camera yeah. sort of you know, comment on stuff. And then she gets loose women, yeah. which was like, to me, it's like the oddest gig for a comedian to get. Cause it's such a, you know, it's such a nice show. Yeah. And like, you can't be, you know, you always have to be sort of loving and really nice and all this sort of stuff. And she's a comic and she's a great comic. And then she just like, didn't tour for years. Yeah. And I remember thinking to myself, why are you not touring? Why are you, you like, you're so famous. And now she's on tour and you've opened for her, I've right? opened for a couple of times, yeah. How is that? Great. I, like... I imagine her audience is like, I would say mostly sort of middle-aged women. Like she was saying that she was surprised because of Taskmaster that actually she was surprised that a number of oh, white really? women yeah, from, being, quite... from coming up on the black circuit. Yeah. She was like, "These white women yeah. are buying my stuff," you yeah, know? Because so because me... I said your household, you're a household. She's like, "No," I said, no, she she's like, you're a household name." Yeah, for me, yeah. it's she, the she weren't having it. For me, it's the opposite. I go to gigs and I go, "Oh, I'm surprised there's black people have turned yeah. up to see me." I'm the Asians. <laughs> I'm the like, oh. Asians. I'm like, "Oh." oh. You, oh. you don't do the black circuit? Nah, I never I never really did. Yeah. I started off, I did some of them. What's the Birmingham scene? I mean, there's... Yeah, Birmingham scene's really good, John Simmett and whatnot. But with the black circuit, I did a couple of gigs, fine. And then I just carried on doing sort of the white gigs. And I've always believed that they black people will come. They like it's like you a, Asian. You don't necessarily have to do all Asian specific gigs. People will just come when they when they see you and they support you. Yeah, but I think yeah. when they, I think with, and I haven't toured since. I will tell you one thing. I haven't toured since I did the when I did Love Island After Sun. Uh, but I get recognised so much more by black people just purely based really? off like, oh my god, nothing I've ever done is, and it's just a constant reminder so that I got one. Two things I say about like my experience with the Asian community coming to my gigs. Yeah, well, a lot of them don't. Yeah. Fair. And I think part of it is because I'm not famous enough. 
Yeah, I, I believe that as well. I guarantee Ramesh probably has a mad Sri Lankan crowd yeah. coming. The only time I did get Asian people was when they saw me on The Apprentice, You're Fired. Oh, that's so funny. <laughs> oh, that's so funny. Like you're bonafide. That's when I got spotted. I've done, that. I've done that show so many times. I've never had one person go, Apprentice, You're Fired. Yeah. I've even done the final where yeah. everyone's watching and yeah. still. No. I've had random uncles be like, Apprentice, You're Fired, I see you. So Laura, you, you said you used to teach, right? Yes. Uh, what, what kind of teaching was it? Um, English teacher for in secondary school up to A level. Jeez. Yeah. Nice. How was that? They're the worst. Brilliant. I, I love teaching. I love teaching. Because um... you've got a rich tradition of teachers who become comedians. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh my. Oh, I mean, it's predominantly teachers. Yeah. In some sort of capacity. Should we name them? Should we see if we oh, want to? Uh, I've got Greg Davis. Shame. It's delicious list. Greg Davis, drama teacher. Robert Shrank and Nathan, maths teacher. Frank Skinner, English teacher. What? Lesser known. I didn't know that. Oh. There you go. Um, okay, more teachers. Uh, it's my turn. Um, oh, Jesus. Yeah, it's getting uh, harder. Uh, Paul Sinner, GP. Ooh. <laughs> he teaches that's people right. to get better. Yeah, that, no, no. Harry Hill, GP, teaches people uh, mm. to no. get better. Who are the other teachers? There are the more. Dogs. Simon Bradkin, well, GP, teaches Mickey people. Mickey Fanagan. Mickey Fanagan talked about being a teacher, didn't he? Yes, he did a bit of teaching. Did a bit of teaching. Uh, there are more, there are more, there are more. Oh, we've really just, I've, That's I, I, I see, I mean, there is a lot, but you forget. I really but Judy Love did work in the public sector as well. So, and, and you know, as a mum and all these sorts of things, I just think she's a phenomenon. And, she, and you know, when you talk about her being like on Loose Women, it's because she's so real. Yeah. You yeah, know, yeah. like you, half, and, and Catherine Ryan's similar in that sense of she's when great. you hang around with those, those women, they're not talking about. Just comedy, comedy, comedy. They're like, how are your kids? Yeah, how, yeah. What are you doing? What balance? What's going on? Yeah. They're real people. And I think that's why almost not accepting how famous they are because they're so real. That for me, they have not changed. For me, know? Catherine Ryan is the best. Like, not uh, like not even comedy. Forget comedy, just like as a person. Because oh. she stands, she always defends people. Yeah. She's fully on board with comedians. I remember when she bought me to open for a kind, gig. Yeah. She, she paid me. Like she paid me, so she was doing like the Garrett Theatre thing and she paid me 300 quid and she didn't even know me. Right. And I'm do, she's like, oh yeah, uh, let's just get Darren up to do, I did the roast. And she was like, oh yeah, let's get him up there to do a 20 and we'll pay him 300 quid. And I was like, 300 quid to, yeah. to do like this room, about 800 people in. It was amazing. And yeah. she's always been just she like, is, she's... she's been so good. Even when like Jimmy Carr has had all of his nonsense with like jokes and stuff, she's always, always backed him, yeah, yeah, yeah. always defended him. And I always really appreciate that with comics. She's on the right side of history on a but lot What I wanted of to ask you was, being a teacher, did you ever have like any crazy and embarrassing moments or moments where you felt like shame? Because I think as a teacher, the, you know, like even when you're a kid, you call a teacher mum. Yeah. It's game over for you for the rest of the day. Yeah. There, yeah, there's a few. There's one thing I've spoke about on that Alan Davis show where I fell in a bin. I genuinely fell in a bin. <laughs> like That's where, cool. At, where I, I mean, it sounds so in incredible. <laughs> I mean, the thing is, this is the difference. If you're a teacher that plays your kind of dominant kind of I'm I'm I am the law energy, yeah. you're gonna love watching that teacher trip up sort of thing. But where I was like in with the girls, I never kind of was this big authority figure, or you'll respect me or nothing. So I think I kind of got away with it. But I was joking with the girls, I had my hands behind, you know, when your hands behind the back of that sort of yeah. power pose. Yeah. And I said, okay. And I sort of just let my let I sort of leaned in, let my leg lift up, sort of kind of hamming it up a little bit of kind of yeah. leaning in terms of but somehow I must have, and I just caught this, you know, those sort of low bins, not quite a waste paper bin, but fairly low, but I yeah. caught then my foot on the bin. So I was like, it kind of knocked me off edge. So the bin leaned forward as I leaned back, art, full ass in the bin, right? right. And, then, and, I, and they were laughing and I didn't, it wasn't like, how do you go out? You know what yeah. I mean? But what was funny, I think they had like a, a sort of timed writing task, not quite an exam, but the thing is someone's shoulders would go, and then someone else's shoulders go, it's like, girls, just let it out. Yeah. Yeah. So they, and then, then it'd be like a few minutes and they would, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So that was fine. But one of the big real shame things, and it was in my first year of teaching, and it's so funny, like, the things that really affect you, and it's the same when you have a gig of like, it's, I'd rather them actively hate me and rebel and shout at me than oh. sheer indifference. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. And yeah. I, had a I had a really tough class and I really planned this lesson and I stayed up, you know, really late to make sure I was meeting all of their needs. They were really challenging class. It's like, you know, it's like when you start out in comedy, a hot room, you know, when yeah. people got I killed at Top Secret, you're like, oh, of course yeah. you did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I killed at ABC. Yeah, yeah. yeah. really? Did you? Yeah. 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 And then, but so uh, that, so it's the same with teaching. Top set class, of course you did a good lesson. When You know when you're a really great teacher when you can handle these, but obviously mm. with a tough class. And I just, they couldn't give a shit. The, the, it was almost contempt. They couldn't, <laughs> 
they they were just like, why is she talking? Carried on with their conversation. It was just right. like I had no handle on the class. I thought my material would be enough, very yeah. like com comedy. And I came out and I just made it in time to the English office. You know, just above the court, like mm. steps up to the corridor. And the head of department and the second in charge were in there, and they were, you know, I was close with them, and I couldn't get my breath for crying. And they thought something had really kicked off or something had happened. They didn't know if it was personal. And they looked at me and said, "What happened? What happened?" I went, "They, they just." Didn't listen. Oh, <laughs> and it was just, oh no. But it was, just, uh, I can still think of how uh, shamefully embarrassing that felt that they couldn't give a fuck that I was even in oh, the so room. Oh, you were embarrassed about the fact that they didn't listen? Oh, they just didn't. oh, we were embarrassed about what you said. <laughs> well, yeah, they we were, just didn't we were, listen. Really? Oh, they didn't listen. Oh, no, that's pretty that's shameful like, oh, as well. The whole thing. Kind of teacher from Dangerous Minds. Yeah, yeah. No, but, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Hey, hey, yeah, yeah. I'm here to hit some truths, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Have you ever heard of Bob Dylan? No, oh, yeah. no, 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 give some sweets for getting questions right like I that. I weren't quite, I've had moments of being that teacher. Hey, yeah, I know a bit of hip and hop, but, the, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. but that was just, they just looked at me and they sort of went, oh, oh. And got back to their writing. They thought it was right. something serious. They were like, oh, but, she yeah. still cares about this. Oh, okay. Yeah, but yeah. I'll tell you a big funny one, actually. This is really true because I would teach in, um, it was after lunch and I was in top set of the corridor. Actually, it's quite far away to the main toilets. And I remembered actually, if you cut for out that door, you're right on a separate building, but it's the sports hall. And I thought, actually, that's the nearest in proximity. It was a year 11 class. I could leave them. Mm. Let me run dash to the toilet because I'm not going to hold it for this lesson. Oh, Come Anyway, in the time that I got to the sports hall, all the PE teachers left. It was a Friday afternoon. They'd left to go and hand out the leaflets for whatever sports day and when it was and who was doing what. So they locked the, the door and I was, I had to... <laughs> I had to like find a passing kid. <laughs> I was locked in the sports hall while I had a lesson going on. It's like an anxiety dream. Nothing worse than having to tell a kid. The kid yeah, had yeah, to yeah, then yeah. go and to find yeah. um, like a PE teacher to let me I out. Need a, I need an adult. Oh, no, I need an adult. <laughs> I need a, a, Excuse me. I've wet myself again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah so um, that was quite shameful. When I had to then go back into the lesson, Miss, where were you, Miss? Where were you? I was like... I, I, I to, uh, and they're like, I, oh, it's a shame, shame. Can I, can I ask you, so you were a teacher, how long were you a teacher for? About 10 years. Ten, about 10 years, yeah. What do your former pupils think of your yeah, career? Because had... even like, you know, you working in banks, you meet your old sort of colleagues and they can't believe it. Mean security, they still yeah. can't believe it. You were a, a teacher. Yeah, yeah. kids got so, yeah. Well, they found out because I'd won the Funny Women Awards. And they found out through that, and then and then they found out your first name. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, that, that was my oh, name, Laura. Laura. But you know what's funny? You know, I talk about it on stage. Had no one really, you know, like I was like, you know, you find that personal information about your teacher. Like, oh my god, I swear, Dan, yeah, yeah. sir's got a mum. I'm not lying. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so what was? And then actually, you don't see your teachers as real people. So I got this thing. I think they were like a year ten class. They were like, Miss, you're funny, you know. <laughs> looking at each other I was like oh thank you she's like no you're really funny though and they were like uh, looking at each other like you should like yeah you should be like funny miss so I was like and they're like we saw that you won an award miss what's going on with all this and uh, I don't know. So, so it was like that and I thought oh god they know and I thought oh and then actually they didn't care yeah. They didn't care. And actually, everyone knew and they quickly didn't care because I'm not a real person, so they don't really care yeah. about you. Yeah, 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 yeah. You, but I get nice things from mums. You like, know when that that happened where the, you're funny, miss, or that, that moment. That's one of those moments where like you kind of realise, you probably don't realise it in a moment. I had similar when I did, when I was a security guard and people yeah. would recognise me from gigs and be yeah. like, wait, didn't I see you? Like when I, I did the Glee yeah. on, a, on a Friday night, Saturday night, Saturday morning, I was working at V Festival. Yeah. And then people were coming up to me going, I saw you last night at the yeah, Glee. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm there going, uh, uh, yeah, that was me. Tickets. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Her bags. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's one of those moments where you kind of realise, oh, I'm probably not going to be doing this much longer. Yeah. Did you realise like, oh, I'm slowly working towards yeah. being a comedian. Do you know what's funny though? I was saying more than any other like profession that brings with it fame, comedy's a really nice slow burner yeah. like I think you could be a musician that's on a certain circuit then an album drops then it explodes yeah, yeah. but actually Lose what comedy. happens yeah what happens with us is you know people stop you and go I saw you at a gig da, da, da. then it's like oh so you do a little bit of telly because it's yeah. just that little bit then it's a bigger bit of telly big, and it's actually we are the only ones that do it really incrementally that's I can't really point. name many unless it's like Axel Blake who everyone knows anyway and would have yeah, been very yeah. popular and then all of a sudden it's Britain's Got Talent I suppose that's a bit of a difference 
But actually, he probably was quite comfortable with being recognised already. already yeah. Yeah, I think true. most of us, it's very incremental. Especially when it comes to like TV, because most of us, like we all do, we all do panel shows and all that sort of stuff. Yeah. And, you know, in terms of people being like, oh, you're that guy, off, it very rarely happens because it's like you you appear on them every now and again. Yeah. yeah. So unless you're on like a big series or something, that's different. Yeah. But yeah, it is after years, it sort of takes its time. And then eventually one thing is what really blows you up. But I think... Nowadays, with uh, you know social media and and whatnot, I mean, you look at somebody say like Nigel Long, for example, yeah, like one Uncle clip, Roger. Uncle, and that's worldwide. One, cl- I mean, he's so big, he had beef with China. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, He had to apologize because yeah. he had some China. guy. I'm guessing he Taiwan or Taiwanese or something. Like, I don't know what it was, but he had to apologize to China, and that's how you know that his his audience, a lot of them, he wants to perform venues in China yeah. so we came out and had to like apologise that's like I mean mad. it's insane but I, it is um, it's funny because people say it's like people go Maya Gemma she's everywhere Maya Gemma Maya Gemma and it's like the general public don't see the hustle that went in, into that or yeah. what happened before or the glow up or the glow up <laughs> yeah, <laughs> she's, I, I, she didn't have a glow up did yeah, she? she was always beautiful she's yeah, just she was perfect isn't she yeah. she's a good but egg but it is that sort of but everyone was I was joking with you know Ed Jones uh, comedian he yeah. makes funny content and cry babies and I was going like, you know, like things like, you know, when you hear someone on a voiceovers or they're everywhere, I was like, yeah, I want to be everywhere. I mean, yeah, like a hate figure. I went, yeah, like a big mortgageless hate figure. figure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Too fucking right. <laughs> Too fucking right. Yeah. yeah, you do You do want that. You want to, yeah, you kind of want to be, it's weird when you do, when you uh, do as a stand up because you kind of, I feel like stand up comedians generally, we don't really have goals. <laughs> yeah. Other than just to be like funny on stage. Like, yeah, you speak to I've sing- got Friday. Yeah. I've got Friday yeah, at 99 yeah, yeah. Club. That's yeah. their goals. Yeah, yeah. They're very humble, yeah. aren't they? Actually? Yeah, it's always it's always very small compared to like you speak to a singer and it's like, you know, oh, I want to have oh, an yeah. Emmy or whatever yeah, it is. Yeah, yeah. We have secret goals. We have the uh, I don't really have any goals. You don't, you don't picture yourself um accepting a BAFTA, being interviewed by Jonathan Ross, you don't accept, uh, picture all those things. Not written no. I mean, if it happened, that'd be great. But to be, my, my attitude is like... As I long get, as you can make a living from comedy. As long as you goal. make a living. Yeah, yeah, you, don't, you don't have a boss. Yeah. I'm yeah. more than happy. And I can, like, life is good, after, isn't it? You yeah. wake up after good. midday. I can, it's a good life. The way things are now, if my career stays exactly the same now, forever, I'm happy. Well, so it's like two pints pissed. Yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah. It's yeah. like two pints pissed. Yeah. It's like, <laughs> I earn money. I'm not like super famous to be properly Fine. hated. I might have a few... Weird yeah. DM slides, but it's like you're not really. It's just a nice life. I don't isn't have it? to ask anybody if I want to go on a holiday. Yeah. Yeah. I can just do it. Just do I'm it. there in the day. I can see family. Yeah, that that sort of freedom is massive. Yeah, it's, it, it, and that's what I I remember overwhelmingly as much as wanting to be a comedian. It just that sense of like, you know, I started because I was going back to work after my third child, and I just thought I can't do this for thirty years. I can't be owned for like this seven yeah. week term. Dear, hello, do you mind if I have the day off for my dad's funeral, please? Yeah, yeah. You know, that energy. Fuck off. That's, I mean, to, to go into comedy, how long have you been doing comedy now? Four years, four, four and a half years. years, yeah. So to do it after God, having... you're killing it for four mm, and a half years. Yeah. Jesus. It is that, insane. It's wild. Uh, to do it, to choose to do it after having like three children, in terms yeah. of financially and the stability that you get from being a teacher. Yeah, and the yeah, discipline yeah, of it. yeah. It's mad to me that yeah. people have all that responsibility and, and they're like, comedy. you know what? I'm gonna go and uh, I'm gonna have my name pulled out of a hat to do stand up. Cause that's yeah. like at the beginning yeah, yeah, of it. Yeah, of that to me is crazy. When you've got family, kids, job in the morning, that that pull for comedy yeah. is so strong. Troll, so strong. I worked, I worked with Roshi and Connor and she says, it's not a career choice, it's a diagnosis. Yeah, you know, yeah, you have to admit, point. I'm a comedian. And, it, and what it was, I just felt this sense of living the wrong life. And what I would say to Darren is, uh, to people, Darren, is this I'd say, oh, you know, you ain't got kids, go and do this, you ain't got that, you ain't got this. But really, what I was reinforcing to myself was, I have got kids, so I can't, so yeah. I can't. Yeah. And I had to overcome that mentality. I remember my husband was listening to a podcast called Don't Quit the Day Job, which was basically people think to live their dream, they're going to quit the day job and do this. And whatever it is, to be an illustrator, to be a comedian, Actually, what you do is fuck all. What you could do while you're working and devote half hour to the dream, an hour to the dream, could, could, could yeah. create wonders. And for me, and you see these like diary CEO or these entrepreneur bullshit Ugh, on Instagram. You know, your favorite entrepreneurs. Guy. Entrepreneurs will want to live their life yeah. in a year or two that you would never want to live to enjoy the rest of your life. And I think, actually, truth be told, that is what I did. Yeah. I was I had kids. I was working full time. I was gigging two or three times a week. And it was hard. And yeah. then there was a pandemic. 
and somehow I made it work through that. So I think actually, yeah, I did have a couple. Holy literally shit! Two. So you was yeah. I yeah. just realised you had the pandemic had year, in between. Your... Then I had a pandemic year and a half. Then I had cancer. Just Joe. You know, so me and my Fuck me and my agent joke. Now I'm better. Me and my agent go. We're like Bubba Gump. We're like after that shrimp fishing was <laughs> easy. <laughs> <laughs> what um what kind of cancer did you have? Breast cancer. Oh wow. I know. That's why we bonded, didn't it? We like illness, don't we? It was all dramatic. Yeah, it's all he dramatic. He really looked out for me. Like we'd only met, but he was so like he because even though you know how he seems like an absolute privileged prick. You know, look yeah. at him. Hi, He's actually he I don't wanna sorry, I'm really big expose. God, I hate you got this good hair. This fucking cunt has got a heart of gold and he'd always you'd always check in how you doing, listen, how you doing. Can we, can we get a beep on that when she says heart of gold, just yeah. beep it over? I don't want to do that. Yeah, leave cut yeah. This fucking cunt's got <laughs> and they might think I've said like dick off steel or something See, like now, that now you're saying this is making me feel very uncomfortable I know do you hate it yeah I do oh nice thing yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. You the worst. a piece now, of shit now I'm going to say something obnoxious yeah it tastes a bit horrible oh I can't not to you <laughs> no. poor people don't deserve to eat or something like that yeah yeah just something that just like, yeah poor... say something about like oh chavy scum yeah yeah, yeah. counter they, housing so... and violence yeah chav. yeah I don't, I don't mind chavy scum that much um, yeah, well, that's great. That, that, that was enough. Yeah, 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 that, yeah. Was, that was enough. I don't mind Travis. That was, that was the most privileged yeah. thing I've ever heard. That was, actually, that don't mind Travis Calm that much. That was literally like when Rishi Sunak said he has middle class, working class friends. And he's yeah. like, oh, oh, right. no, 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 not working class. No, I don't really. I think, I think actually you two might be my first. Oh, really? Yeah, fuck off. You brought your, you brought your middle, working what? class virginity with us. <laughs> yeah. Where, which so, they've never been skiing. <laughs> 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 that is literally how I judge my, my middle class people. Like, what kind of holidays did you have? Because we couldn't afford yeah. holidays. No, no. How old were you when you first went on the plane? 15. 27, I oh, think really? it was. And it was for a gig. We went to. And how old were you when you first went on the boat? What would you say, boat? That's, see, this is where the racism comes. There's. <laughs> Sorry. Emmanuel's still here as well. Yeah. You're just getting two black people. Yeah, there's a bigger. I don't know what's more racist: the fact that you, you said that, or the fact that I'm like, I don't go on boats. I fucking hate. I don't Why hate. don't you go on boats? I'm not afraid of boats and water. Fuck that shit. Don't know what's there. I hate the. I. I'll say this to the camera. I fucking hate water. Deep sea water on my head. Do one. Get Do lost. Do not shower. No, I shower, but I it's sh like here. And oh like, really? You know, no, wash your head and face. No, I wash my head and face. Come on, dude. But like, there's a towel there. Because I wash it, I let the water hit it, but then I'm like, ugh, get He's away from it. He's not being like immersed. Yeah. Wait, so what, I sorry. fucking we need hate to, the water. How do you, hate wait, it. how do you shower? I get in the shower. Yeah. I marvel at the, the how, body. Right. Have you got an over the head shower? I've got, a, oh, what do you think, I've got like a knee shower? Yeah, over the head. No, some people have those handheld ones. Oh, God. We used to have them back in I the know, day. I working class. Yeah. <laughs> we said, do you have one of those shows? You can tell. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> those are dangerous. They were dangerous, <laughs> man. Which one? <laughs> <It> would, oh, <laughs> my. Which one? <laughs> the one that it would connect to the tap. And you turn it hot water on, then you turn the cold water on, and it would no, sort of like an orange know. pipe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think, yeah, the orange pipe, I feel, it was like, I feel like orange pipe was very specific to Asian households. Yeah, yeah. I feel like we had more pipe. cream. Cream. Yeah, 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 cream. Yeah. cream. Orange, orange is Asian. Because my best friend grew up Asian, and she's like, that was, orange pipe was a yeah, particularly... Yeah, orange pipe was Asian. Or like yeah. a basin bath. To go with your orange bathroom fittings. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah I let yeah. the water hit my head, because I put shower on and all that and water, but then I, yeah, I've got a towel You're not next like to us. No. Do you towel mid shower? No, I towel at the end, but the, I I do the head bit at the end. The head doesn't get touched. Wow, I've just realised. Yeah, that's what I do. I literally I, I shower everything. So you're showering like you're doing. Like, yeah, I've the, got my. They call the lump, what the line thing. Got his rain hat on. I've got, <laughs> yeah, like the tiny umbrella. <laughs> so you're like leaning back. Yeah, why am I doing that? What? No, I'm not leaning back. The shower's sort of just like he positions it here. so it hits in there. He's I've got my, I've got my. Uh, How do you, you know, position it? Because it's an over the head shower. Yeah, but it's like it's like a bit away, yeah. so it sort of hits my chest, and then I do all the head and the face stuff at the end, and then I get the towel. I don't do I don't do face stuff in the in the middle. What, what's the fear of water though? What is I it? I hate it. I hate water. Not a fan. Fucking animals in there. Sucks. People piss in there. <laughs> you are shaking it. Oh, in the in the shower. Yeah, shower's like fine, but like see, I I. Hate the sea. Do you get in the pool? No. Why? Because I'm not a fan of pools. <laughs> <laughs> I fuck, I hate water. So I really you can't do. swim. I can't swim. I don't want to learn to swim. I've got no interest in it. Fucking hate it. I hate water. I really do. Like, I'll be, I'll be, I'll be at a beach in a nice. I'll be at a beach in a nice place, and I will not go anywhere near the water. I'll make it very apparent that I'm not in the water. I'll walk around a beach in jeans. What? That's so funny. I just love watching people be very passionate about something. 
so dumb. Yeah, but it's I, not even I, dumb. I, I stand by. It's, it's, it's okay. like two thirds of the planet we live on. You're, you're like, and I tell you, that bugs me. Yeah, two thirds of the planet. You're like, fuck you. Yeah, yeah, actively, so, okay, fuck you. When you're with a girl, yeah, and she wants to go on a beach holiday, yeah. Have you been? Have you done that yet? Yeah. What happened? She didn't go in the water. I'm like, you enjoyed it. She, but she, but she got a bikini not, on. She, listen, listen. She's dating Darren Harriet. Right. She knows my my attitude towards uh, croissants and breakfast food, yeah. and she's very aware of my attitude towards water. Have you ever had water. sex in the shower? No! We have sex in the shower! There's no room! What if it's cold? It's stupid. <laughs> Makes no sense. Also, I've got my shower. I mean, it's fit another girl in. God bless you. <laughs> <laughs> it's awkward for both of us. No, I've never had sex in the shower. Not my thing. Not at all. Just go have a shower and have sex afterwards. Do you think if you learned to swim when you were little, it would be changed? Do you know sometimes because you're, you, if you can't swim, you're totally out of control in that environment. Completely, yeah. And then if you then, then there's a little bit of humiliation when you can't do something like this is the most that you should be able to do. No, she's, she's, she's so good. But she's completely right. She's so good. If I, like, for example, if I have, when I have kids, I want my kids to learn to swim. Yeah. Why? Because I, I feel like they shouldn't know how to swim. Why? They yeah. can't follow, they can't follow dad. But why should they learn to swim? Because they Because it's a life skill and, yeah. and it's a survival yeah, but skill and they're, then they're, they're actually safe on two thirds of the planet. Yeah, but they live on. I swear to God. That, that ain't... I swear to God. I've been on planes, right? And I go, and we go over the sea, and I go. If we was to sort of crash right now, I'm more worried about being in the water than I am about the plane crashing. I'm like, if I'm in the water, you'll be I'm dead anyway. For, Don't worry. Yeah, they just yeah. like it. They just give something for the trolley dollies to do. It's, you'll be dead. But the um, the oh, yeah, you'll be dead. I'll have a, my, a very good friend of mine has learned is learning to swim. Late forties, early fifties. Jamaican. I should just incidentally, learn. I'm mentioning that he's Jamaican, and it's been a huge, huge psychological I'll thing to swim. for him to overcome. Shut up. How did you swim? The the idea of you seeing me. I'm pitching a, the show with a, with a rubber ducky I and two and two armbands on. Yeah, I can and you're like, just do it. It's easy, like me. I can teach you. Shut up. You don't swim anymore anyway because your ears. No, I swam a lot in Tenerife. I've got an ear infection because of it. Oh but, bless you. Oh, that wasn't the only infection you had. Uh, yeah, that's true. My dick's bleeding. Uh, I can uh, teach you to swim. Legitimately true. You no, you got a uh, willy infection. Well, I had some blood in my semen. and I didn't know what to do about it. What 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 what, what is it? <laughs> What? Oh, oh, who caused it? I uh, no, I haven't tested it yet. When the fuck were you in Fa Tenerife? Thank you, Laura. Three and a half weeks ago. Go to your GP. Thank I you. have. He's giving me the bottle, but I've not had time to do the sample. No, you do have time to do the sample. What you time. have to masturbate into it. Yeah. The, you uh, have, yeah, to have to produce a, a sample. Yeah, I have to do a jizz sample and a piss sample. Oh, he wants do a jizz sample. Please. Oh, one of them's fun. Yeah, but I'm I was about to say, I'll help you. I'll get my tit out for you. I couldn't even say tits. This is why I'm taking it seriously. Time is of the essence. Shame is delicious. delicious. Uh, e what are you plugging? Uh, NHS 111. Yeah, uh, Use that service. It's very good. Uh, our sex education comes out on the 21st of September. Uh, check that shit out. Watch it and tweet about me or thread about me, whatever it is. Threads, 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 threads. Uh, these Fred, days, Fred, I'm on Fred. tour with Kate Curd in the autumn. Come and check Whee! us out. Go to katecurd.com and see us there. And uh, that's mainly it. Are you opening for K at the Apollo? Yes, I am. Nice. Uh, nice. Darren. Uh, oh. Roadman uh, on tour. You can catch me at the Edinburgh Fringe. Uh, by the time this comes out, I probably will be at the Edinburgh Fringe, maybe. Uh, catch me there for the month. And then I'm on tour from the 15th of September. All over the country. There's lots of tickets available. There's fucking lots of them. <laughs> so please, buy a couple of tickets. Come see your boy. Bye -bye. I'm talking to you, Redding. Uh, South but, Street. Huh? South Street. I can't remember. I haven't paid that much attention to it. But <laughs> do buy tickets to the tour, please. This is my, I'll tell people, this is my last tour. When, never, never touring again after this. Why? No, no. Because uh, I don't want to worry about tickets. It's, no, it's stressing me out too much. Why is it Listen. called Roadman? Uh, it's called Roadman because I'm on the road, man. Oh, uh, right. Pathetic. <laughs> 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 Is that, yeah, Shut up. Man. What, what was yours called? Man. Yeah, the Pretender. Man. Yeah, of course. You're pretending to be a comedian. Hey! Third of November. We are doing uh, another live show. We are doing a live show. Cheerful, earful. I'll be there. I'm not. Laura will be there. We'll have some guests. Laura will be there. Yeah. Maybe. No. Yeah, maybe. She signed a contract. Uh, depend. This is a verbal agreement. She'll probably be yeah, I'm just, I'm just signed up. <laughs> she'll probably be filming something. To be fair. So. Yes. Yeah, so, all right. Let's save that sort of disdain. Uh, third of November. Prince hey. Victoria Pub. Tickets available at cheerfulearful.com. Yeah, do come and see us live. The last few live shows that we've, I mean, we've done like, what, two or three, I think? Live shows ever? We've done three live shows. And they've all been absolutely amazing. So Honestly, the crowds... people have come out of them saying this is the best thing they've ever seen live. 
Yeah, legitimately. legitimately. They, they actually said that. Yeah. Mad shit happens. Uh, Laura, what are you plugging, Bab? Well, look out for my announcement because there's a tour coming Ooh. soon in the Ooh. new Ooh. year. Ooh. Ooh. And it's very exciting. I won't, might give you the name now or not. But check me out. Check me out. All the things I'm doing. I've got a nice little podcast called Bang On It. Check it out on Blah. Spotify, wherever you get your pods. Of me and Michelle DeSwart. And just generally look out for me on telly and just support my career and follow me on What's Instagram. What's your socials? That Laura Smith. It's Smith with a Y, just to fuck shit up. On the 4th of August, there's a big announcement coming. 4th right? of August, big announcement. Yeah. <laughs> zup, uh, zup. On tenter hooks. Oh, okay. yeah. Yeah, yeah tender hooks, yeah. Tenter. Yeah, do f- tenter. Tenter? Yeah, tenter, tender hooks. tender hooks. Oh, tender. Okay, I was, I was thinking of chicken. Tender hooks. That's something else. <laughs> I was thinking of food. That's something else. <laughs> tender. <laughs> ten- ten- uh, do ten- support ten- Laura. Laura's ten- got- tender hooks and nipples. Mm. Oh, is that what it is? No, they're not. Just yeah, it's not. Him. That's, you just tender made that up. Hooks, Chicken tendies. Chicken tendies. Ten- <laughs> they're tender hooks. Shame Twizzlers. Shame is delicious. Shame is Do delicious. Do support Laura Smith, and that's Smith with a Y. Uh, it's very funny. She's got a podcast, lots of clips online. Was that a teacher thing, or was that how you're sitting there saying that she spelled? Oh no, it's it's my married name. I'm a Taylor. I should, Laura Taylor. What a good name. I was Laura Taylor. Yeah. Uh, LT. 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 LT in this motherfucker. Do you, yeah. do you have a middle name? Charlotte. LC Taylor. Ra boy. That is fucking sick. <laughs> yeah. Elsie Taylor. Everyone call, my mates will call me Taylor still. Do they? Yeah, I'm Taylor. What's your middle name? Naveed. Oh, Naveed. Yeah, Ishan Naveed. Naveed Akbar. Correct. That's Ishan Naveed. That's how they say it in the Middle East. How do you say Akbar? Akbar. 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 Ishan Naveed Akbar. How do you say Naveed? Ishan Naveed Akbar. Oh, <laughs> you rolly tummy. Darren Ricardo. I only, I only fancy you when you're rolling your arms. Oh, oh, it is a little bit. It is a little bit sexier. Yeah, do you get a little what, tingle? What rolling in the arms? When yeah. you say uh, yeah, because it's very useful for cunnilingus. Woo! Okay, Shall we tell me how you what, what's what do you call like meat in a wrap? What do you call it? <laughs> I like a baguette. Shawarma. Want... <laughs> <laughs> oh. I mean, say it one more time. <laughs> Kebab roll. <laughs> 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 would you, how you say um, <laughs> how you say how you say, how you say, how you say. Uh, so Laura are you are you someone who okay number one are you someone who feels shame easily I, I like how we ask this question like 40 well, minutes in. but also I feel like you're someone you have a very kind energy but if you're close to someone I think you're very good at shaming them for stuff. No, I've, I've, do you know what it is? I've, I've done a lot of work on myself and I've unpacked a lot of shame and, you uh-huh. know, given up a lot of shame. And I think I've worked very hard at making sure my children don't feel shame. And I've definitely have parented like that, that old school parenting of like, because you take the piss, that's why, because you're disgusting <laughs> and you don't know how to go on. <laughs> you know, that sort of energy. I mean, <laughs> like, I, that, I, I, cult- that was my mum. Yeah, yeah, that's what I mean. <laughs> that's, that's literally it, my mum. It mom. cultivates yeah, shame. Yeah. Because you embarrass me. You, you eat too much. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You left shit on the towel. <laughs> yeah, yeah. All that sort of good stuff. Oh my God. It, 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 are those things you heard? Cool. Yeah, that was me. Yeah, by, yeah when I was it a kid. Makes yeah. It makes so heavy. much sense now. And I think we've learned a lot about, I've learned, I've done a lot of work on separating myself from my actions, as in I can get stuff wrong without <laughs> being wrong. I, I said, can embarrass yeah. myself without being an embarrassment. Yeah. And actually, like Louis C.K., yeah. This is it. You can, is that Louis C.K.? Are you Louis C.K. in me off? I can wank down the phone. I can, I can wank. <laughs> I could wank down the phone and say, no, I'm not a predator, yeah, yeah, you know. You could be a good comedian and a creep. I'm not a creep. <laughs> <laughs> you just went, say, say, you should say hide what a meat in a rap is. Say it to me, say it to me. Oh, yeah. Roll your eyes. I also, I also Do you like, know what? When, you put, like com- when, you, when you put it like that, I'm, I'm the Louis C.K. of <laughs> British comedy. I also like Louis, uh, Laura's example of Louis C.K.'s creepness, which was him <laughs> masturbated on a phone as opposed to forcing people to watch him <laughs> watch jerk him off. Do, yeah. <laughs> Sexual sort of about power. So yes, I got you to roll your R's yeah. on shawarma, but you're a bigger comic than me, That's so it's not, not actually true. abuse. It is not true. You I just not. sold out a tour, baby. I, I think we should. I think I, I wouldn't go with that yet. We'll, we'll see after. Uh, okay, fine. Can you not include me trying to get people to roll their R's to roll their R's in, the same in some sort of ethno yeah. Yeah. ethnophilia? <laughs> Ethnophilia. That, Great. That sounds I mean, like that's a podcast a sex title. Category, yeah. <laughs> um, so you've worked a What's lot. What's wrong with me? You've worked a lot on uh, not having ex- shame. Not having I shame. don't want shame. No. That's great. Oh man, I'm full of it. How do you don't, do it? How do you do it? Yeah, how do you do that? Each one says he doesn't have any shame. I don't feel any shame. Why not? I don't feel any shame. Oh, were well, you loved by your parents? Pathetic. I know, grow no, up, on. dude. Yeah. What, you got, what, you, you, got, what you got hugs every day, you fucking loser? Yeah, both of those things. Man up, you wimp. Yeah. Both of those things are true. 
But also, what, my, you cry when you want to, you fucking dude? Yeah, a little bit. <laughs> oh, yeah, well, I'm stable. But also, my mum was also like, she wasn't averse. <laughs> you have no business being a comedian. Yeah, I know. Yeah. My mum also, but she, God rest her soul, she uh, didn't shy away from making me feel shit about stuff. Go on, I like uh, the sound uh, of her. That, no, yeah, yeah. Uh, the worst thing my mum ever said to oh. me, basically when I was 24, I had a bit of a mental breakdown. Oh, pathetic. Right. Yeah, right. 24, <laughs> you had a mental breakdown about too many boners. <laughs> yeah, yeah basically. I had yeah. a mental breakdown. I was sleeping on a bus for two and a half months. I'll tell you the story. Yeah, oh it's, my God. it's wild. And uh, when, I got, when I came back home after sleeping on the bus, it was fucking too much. Uh, my mum and I were having a major, massive argument. And she screamed at me in Bengali. She said, if I killed you, I'd go to jail. So I wish I could put you back inside and have an abortion instead. I mean, that is... That's a, a lyric, boy. That's a pretty good... That's like a heckler comeback. <laughs> it was too much. A friend of mine, she said, um, and she was funny, she says, oh, you know what we... A, a, a much older lady, and we worked together at an after school club, she says, oh, you know what we say about children like that back home? And she's Jamaican. She says, yeah. we say, oh, they should put them back in and we fuck over and they fuck over. Nice. That is, that's yeah. a similar it's all thing. The same. Yeah. My mum would regularly, when I'd come downstairs on Saturday morning, be like, why aren't you dead? And that is why. why. And that is why I always felt like we had children's you know spirits. That's quite funny. That's not coded. You get an English codedness. Yeah. Like, oh, yeah, I, no, no, I, no. I joke about my mum saying, you know, you haven't got anything nice, they don't say anything at all. Yeah. Very quiet yeah. woman around me. So, you know, like the kind of. Um... <laughs> yeah. There's no reading between the lines of Ishan's mum. Yeah, yeah. and like... I think there's almost some quite fun in that when you go, like, I say mad stuff to my kids and they find it hilarious. Yeah, when yeah. I go, next person to say mum's going to an orphanage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because they just go, mum, mum, yeah. mum. Ma, ma, ma. And they, yeah. they, they, they crack up at that. Ishan's mum's really like, funny. I wish you was had orphanage. <laughs> my. My parents, when I was nine years old, they collaborated to print off. I don't know how they did print off a one way ticket to Bangladesh, drove me to the airport. When you was nine? Yeah. Because they were like, we're going to discipline you if you don't behave yourself. Yeah. And apparently for like a few months, I'd been acting up. Yeah. So they went to the elaborate trouble of printing off a ticket. <laughs> Someone went to a library to use a printer. In All English, this... at the old age of 41, <laughs> yeah. I've now got new heroes yeah. in my life. They... Tell me more. <laughs> right? so, I'm nine. All I see is a ticket that was like A4, like. <laughs> they got a giant ticket. Like... Right? And it says London to Tucker, right? <laughs> One way. They had a seat number, right? And they even got like a perforated bit. That's so like funny. a boarding pass. They really went I, out I, of that. I have a clear memory of this. Then I sit in the car, we go to the airport, we go to Terminal Were you 2. Crying? Wait, they, you're like, no, mommy, no. Yeah, wait, they drove to the airport. Yeah. Terminal 2. Because, at, and I'll tell you why at the end, right? So, got to Terminal 2, they give me the ticket, and they're like, right, because you're not listening, you have to go. There's departures. Right? So I walk in. And I'm like crying, going, I'm being sent I'm imagining you've got like a stick, <laughs> like, like a rag on the end. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And, oh, goodbye then. Yeah, and the, you know, back then the suitcase didn't have wheels on them. Of course oh. not, so I had this, no. I had this little suitcase with my worldly belongings in there. <laughs> Panini stickers. And I'm dragging this thing. Going, looking for the Gulf Air. Check-in desk. Oh my god, so funny! I walk. I get as far as getting to the queue of the Gulf Air check-in desk, and then my dad comes over and he says, "Right before it's quite a long queue, but so before you go, let's get a meal before you go, uh, because this is going to be our last meal together for a while." (laughs) Fuck me! What the effort? We go back up. We go upstairs. They had um, an Anger Steakhouse back then. Nice. Sit in the Anger Steakhouse. We have dinner. Get in the car, go home. <laughs> uh, what? Doesn't that draw? Uh, I that love tra- because he's, he's had a fucking mental breakdown. Yeah. Like <laughs> I love the way they like, No, don't have shame. Severe mental well, health breakdown. issues. Yeah, yes. they were just like, how do you not have a breakdown? We just wanted to because my dad would do that. He'd drive us to the airport for a, a day out every so often. Excuse but they me? did it in the guise of he'd drive you to the airport as like a day out. Yeah, hey, we're, we're going to we're going to Terminal Two, y'all. Yeah, we used to go to the airport for like dinner. Which airport? Heathrow usually. Heathrow's a great airport. Yeah, really but they good. live in Essex. Yeah, we just it'd be worse. It'd be worse if it was Luton. If it was Luton, that's child yeah. abuse. Yeah, well, Heathrow's so yeah, Heathrow. 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 Heathrow actually good. But they were going to send me to Bangladesh. They got me as far as the checking desk. I do love the fact their dedication to you just being <laughs> such a bad kid right. that they're like, we need, <laughs> yeah, I'm fine. we need a whole plan. <laughs> it was so good. Why didn't they just punch you? Is it oh, hitch? they did that too. Oh, okay. I guess yeah. I got closed on the fuck out. Okay. Yeah, same here. I got beat with all sorts, I like, dude. Off the top, it was rope. like a WWE hardcore yeah, match in my matches. house. Yeah, I was yeah. like, oh, you getting a t- you getting the ladders out today, mum? <laughs> did you ever get hit? 
You might as well yeah. at this point just point to the NSPC. Oh, yeah. no. <laughs> Anything to promote. Childline. That's did, what we're did you promoting. Ever get hit? Yeah, but it was always funny. We always find getting funny, hit yeah. funny. I find it nostalgic. I've got a joke too. about no, my mum beat me in a caravan on the Isle of Sheppey just for saying booyaka, which is true. That's funny. Is that yeah, true? Know. Yeah, she's true. And then, but we just found everything we found funny. But mum, you know, we just found it. We, the main thing, we, we, there's three girls sharing a bedroom. We, our childhood was just funny. We just used to laugh yeah, yeah, and we used yeah. to wind each other up and we'd laugh so much. And my mum would be on her last fucking nerve and I can remember, and she'd just come in and just fucking go mad dog on us. But yeah. it was just fun. Like, it was we funny. We weren't like scars. I mean, I found, yeah. We always just found it funny. I wasn't scarred by that. I no, just found I, it hilarious. I thought it was funny. I yeah. got whooped, man. I got held upside down like a rack of lamb. Just whooped. My mom regular. Wow. Uh, my Have mom you got wants- siblings? Yeah, my brother as well. My brother also would get whooped, and uh, but he was he was the oldest, so she would whoop me first, yeah. and then he, he would have my to My younger brother never barely got any whoops. Oh, really? No, my mum yeah, was a, He seems equal. a lot more comfortable as a person. No, my yeah. mum would whoop us all. <laughs> but I never got as bad as my cousin. My cousins got it way worse. Really? They would get like uh, extension cord wires beaten with those. That was like common. It's my, so weird to say that, because people were like, oh, that's horrendous, but yeah, no, that was normal. Was normal. My mum's was steamed an iron in my face. Oh yeah, I appreciate that. Like, I really, really like her. <laughs> she was, was, she was like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, she's like, I'm gonna put this, I'm gonna put this on your face. I was like, go on then, and she sprayed it. I thought it was good skin. Thing with my, mom. my skin is immaculate. The Thank you, mum. Mom. The, the weight of on my brother's head still makes me laugh to this day. He just, I don't know why. It was the morning. He just wasn't eating his weight of My mum just grabs the bowl. And just went, yeah. You just snapped. Put it on his head and he just looked like Trevor McDonald. <laughs> it was the funniest thing ever to me. Still now it makes me chuckle that he got a bit on his head. But it is, it's like, you just think of like stress. Now, when you become a parent, you realise like, when I like snap at my kids, it's usually when my cup is full. Do you know what right, I mean? I'm yeah, stressing, yeah. And I just take that as a kind of sign of like, okay, you need to step back and you're doing too much. Do you know yeah. what I mean? But I just think our parents' generation didn't have that choice. And let's face it, you know, of course. if you're from a working class background, if you're from an immigrant, immigrant background, background the hustle is real Oof. and you need your kids to play ball. And, yeah, 100%. you know, we, we lost our dad when we were quite young. So there was all, and I don't, I don't see it in my kids, but there was just a strong sense of, we naturally knew we we're all pulling in the same direction as yeah, my mum. Yeah, yeah. And when we didn't, you can see it was just like, you know, I don't yeah. know. I get to this day, I don't know how my mum raised us all. I don't know how she did it as a, as a uh, widowed. Yeah. A young, I feel she that. was my yeah. age when she was widowed. I feel and to that. me, that's insane. Yeah, my mum was 32 when my dad died. And I'm like, oh, you had two, you had two boys, 111, one of 13. Can you imagine? Oh, I feel the same. My mum was my mom And your mum's first... a young mum then. Yeah, she's a young mum. Yeah. She's a young mum. My mum had her first kid when she was 17. And that kid was taken away by his dad when she was 21. And then I was born when she was 24. So she had the trauma of having trauma of one kid not being there. And the trauma of having you, yeah. yeah and then I, mean. I turned up. Wild. And she's like, I need to have another one just to I'm gonna, I'm gonna yeah. nail it at least once. And then she uh, had her on and it was great. And dad had no money. And mum came from money. She didn't know what to do with the whole situation. So I don't begrudge. I can't. You have so much. Things. And I think compassion is a good because I think the shame is about when you internalize that stuff. Yes. Yeah. And then when you when you then learn compassion, and often you can have therapy and you can go as far down the road as whatever. And, you know, my therapy is re- certainly not linked to my mum or anything like that, but it's like those things where you go, ah, oh, you know, they were doing the best they could. When you have that compassion, yeah. passion, it wasn't about me. And actually it's a bit of a kind of, um, I read it, it's in Ruby Wax books, covers it about, it's safer for a kid to internalise poor treatment or mad situations mm. than for them to think these caregivers are not capable of taking care of me. That's much more damaging psychology. Yeah. So people internalise the worst kind of abuse, like whether yeah. it's sexual or whatever it yeah. is, they internalise it. And actually to get rid of shame, was, also this is a funny show, but you know, to get rid of that shame is basically going, well, no, I'm just going to be very compassionate yeah. to those people that were yeah. damaged. And actually... This is, it's like you heal, your, you've got to heal. That's what you, yeah. the only thing you owe to this world is to heal so that you can be present and you can love and you can be loved. And these are very important things to learn. And we have so many other ways of doing things other than just healing. We yeah. Just, but have you ever shat comedians. yourself? Yeah, I have shat myself. Have you? Yeah. When? How? Why? Well, there's always the kind of mild hungover, just standard shit yourselves. So yeah. What about Sabre? What do you, why yeah. you sound like it's normal? Like, well, it, well, this is this is, this is on the, well, it was going through chemo, so it's a bit dark. But I remember t- traveling from. Oh, here we go. I oh, know, I oh, know. Oh, oh, oh my god! god. Here we go. oh, if anyone's going through chemo, one chem- or two of us oh, get it. All right. Here's all right. It. If you're going ever ever having treatment in chemo treatment, I'm saying to the camera now, don't wear jumpsuits. 
Because oh. if there's a tight situation... Sorry, sorry, can I just say, if someone's going through chemotherapy, yeah. which I assume, you know, this is quite a difficult thing because yeah. you're going through chemotherapy because you've got cancer, why are you then, I'm going to slay with a jumpsuit, baby. <laughs> I'm a slay. Let I them slayed. Know. I slayed. I had a £400 wig. I slayed. You I didn't miss a beat. Listen, what I'm saying is, don't wear a jumpsuit because if you're ever caught short, you'll make it to the landing. You'll make it home. You'll make it to the landing and you just don't do that last bit where that button don't come undone. Really? And shitting yourself in a jumpsuit is a Can fucking ask, messy op. Is chemo poo different from normal poo? Um, Question of the show. Well, no, it's just... It's just you're on such a cocktail of drugs. That's why I was That's asking. Yeah, is it, okay. yeah, you're just. Is it a different color? Oh god, drop! Oh no, no, God, this is really gross. I don't talk about such things. No, no, no. Your wee might be. Your wee might be bright red. Really? Because of the chemical, yeah. And you have Fuck. to make sure you're double flushing and bleaching because it's toxic. Your wee in toxicity. Fuck. Jesus it's Whoa, Christ! It's brutal. One of our one of our previous guests, Emmanuel Snoopy, he wouldn't be able to drink his toxic piss, then would he? Oh, but his piss is. Do you know what? It, I actually it'd have had, to be a cranberry juice. Yeah. Cranberry I had his juice. piss tested, and it is ninety percent gin. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> He's uh, his own brewery. Laura, thank you so much what for doing the show. What a great way to end. What a really fun Just way. mucking off another comedian. Very beautiful, earnest moment. <laughs> to, have you shit yourself? <laughs> I'm, I'm, yeah, but to, to quote someone else who shat themselves, saying, you've got to remember, shitting yourself's all right. It's the cleaning up that's the problem. Yeah, that's true. That is true, yeah. You have to just sort of burn everything. Shit in yourself, you're like, oh, I get it. I get why babies are so fucking happy. <laughs> it's true. If I shit my clothing, I'm Man. setting fire to it. <laughs> All right. Thank you for listening to Shame is Delicious. Um, <laughs> Have you never shit yourself? Not, not since I was like seven. No, I don't shit myself. Seven's no, quite old, though. I don't piss... Uh, <laughs> no, it's, 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 it's pretty old, actually, if you think about it. Yeah, I'm uh, Thank you for listening to Shame is Delicious with the fantastic Laura Smith. Do follow Laura, Laura. What are your socials? Is it just Laura just Smith? Just that Laura Smith. That Laura Smith. Follow One of the only few comedians whose success I will never begrudge. Liar. Genuinely. You begrudge me. You hate me. You're plucking my downfall. Yeah, it's fair. It's fair. Aisha, you got anything parting words? No, no. Thank you so much for listening. Don't wear a jumpsuit when you're undertaking chemotherapy. <laughs> and, um, yeah, nothing, nothing really. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Thank you for listening. Please give us a five-star uh, review. <laughs> share the podcast. Share the clips. Let everyone know. The if fuck, Aisha? Have you just, like, lost if, energy? If you've been affected by any of the issues... <laughs> Yes, so right. many in this podcast. fucking issues. <laughs> Get in touch with Macmillan Cancer Care <laughs> and or NSPCC. And They're give your green. samples to your GP, motherfucker. I'll send you, yeah, send, send, if you've got any dick issues, <laughs> i.e. semen, uh, blood in the semen or blood in your piss, make sure you get it checked up ASAP. Checked up. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, okay, shawarma. I'll, 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 bye. <laughs> <laughs> see, 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 I'll end it there. <laughs> Shame is delicious. delicious. Shame is delicious Making bad decisions Shame is delicious Making bad decisions